Hey, what's up? It's Greg at Fisherman Ted Quarters. Today I want to show you guys an ultimate sand eel imitation. It's called the Red Gill. If you're familiar with them, great. If not, this is something you definitely want to check out. If you're trying to imitate sand eels. These can be used almost all season long. It's a slender, very, very durable soft bait. It has a little paddle tail on the back, but the slender, sleek profile here is a perfect imitation for a sand eel. It's probably one of the world's best sand eels imitations. It comes from the United Kingdom, from the UK. Awesome for striped bass, but you also catch a lot of other species on these. For the most part, they really come in two sizes. There are some other options and a bunch of different colors. You can check them out here at Fisherman Ted Quarters. But I think one of the most challenging parts of the red gill lure is how to rig it. I think it's kind of uh, something that some anglers might see, might be a little overwhelmed with. Um, so that's why I'm kind of making this video to show you how I personally rig them as a teaser. It's how I fish them most effectively. But you can also clip off the head, fish it on a lead head, jig head. Uh, you can also fish it with a single hook with a weight up above it, like a Carolina rig too, like a little small egg weight, or um, um, you, know, you can fish them a, a bunch of different ways. But personally, how I like to fish it is as a teaser. So I have a separate video on specifically how to make a dropper loop rig for fishing teasers. So I'm not gonna go too into that right now, too deep into that, but I'll just show you this right now. I personally use 50 pound clear monofilament for my main line for making these dropper loop teaser rigs. Got that here. Uh, basically gonna do a simple dropper loop rig. I twist it. So I twist the, the one side forward, the other side back, which gives me this twisted loop. When I'm using this rig for rigging red gills, uh, very important that I go and make a longer distance. It has to be at least six inches. If you make a small, say three inch loop, it's gonna be very, very challenging to get the red gill on here in the hook, which I'll get to next. But I basically twist this up nice and long, give or take, say five, six, maybe seven inches give an extra twist to add a little more length. I like to have a little open loop here. If you pull this down apart and twist it, you can make it tighter and remove that loop, which you might want for different scenarios. But for rigging red gills, I like to leave a little loop there. You'll see that's gonna help me in a second. I bring this back on one side, on the back of the standoff part, and I bring it back around on the other side on the front. So one loop is on this side of the standoff, one is on the back side, front and back. Basically makes sort of like a pretzel. The one that's on the back, which is this one here's on the front. I'm gonna bring it through the back side and forward three times. It's one, two, three. And this one here is on the back side of the standoff. I go around the back. So it's basically a more difficult way of making a dropper loop. There's lots of different videos how to make dropper loop rigs. Like I said, I did a dropper loop, a twisted dropper loop video, which I'll throw a link to so you can see that. That's basically what it looks like before I pull it down tight. I'm gonna give a little tension here on this loop with my mouth and my lips to pull this tag to keep it from kind of coming out as I pull it down. When it gets to about there, I'm gonna give a little bit of moisture and spit on it. A lot of friction is created by, by these twists and I don't want that friction to compromise this 50 pound leader. Now, the 50 pound leader, there you go. The 50 pound leader is what I personally use off the beach or in the boat when I'm striped bass fishing. Uh, yes, you could go heavier. This knot's gonna be a little more difficult and rigging the red gills be much more difficult. I don't feel that you need to go up to say 60 or more. Um, and yes, you could definitely go lighter, but I'm not gonna spend all this time uh, doing this with some real light line for it to get chafed up a little bit and then all of a sudden I have to re-rig it. This is not something I would rig on the beach, say in the night, even really during the day. This is all stuff I rig up pre-hand before, say the night before in preparation for a fishing trip, you can have these rigged up and ready to go beforehand in a little baggie, like in like a little baggie in a leader wallet. So all you have to do is just tie on up to the top side and you're ready to rock and roll. So getting back to this, that's how you do a twisted dropper loop. All right, from there, I've got a short end and a long end. You can always trim one or the other, but right now I'm not worried about the top side, which is gonna to attach to your main line or braid. I'm not worried about the bottom side, which could be a, a simple loop, whether it's a surgeon's loop or perfection's loop or a clip. You could use a dual lock clip or a tackle angle clip or a speed clip of some sort here. That's really not the important part of this video. That's up for you guys to figure out what you want to do on either side. This video is really to show you how to rig this um, sand eel imitation from Red Gill onto this dropper loop. So we got the dropper loop here. I'm using a lighter, smaller diameter line here. I just used the high vis orange 30 pound, just for example's sake, but you could use just about anything here. Heavier line or that same 50 pound, I wouldn't suggest because the knot's gonna be bulky, it's not gonna pull, pull through this, this, uh, this nose here. So as you see, I, I insert this into the nose, and I'm slowly gonna insert it and also twist it. When I spin it, it, 
it pops out the other side. So I pull this through. So now I have a long stretch of light line. This scenario is 30 pound. And I'm going to tie on the nose side, not the tail side. The tail's gonna get the hook. The nose side onto the end of my dropper loop, which is here. So I'm just gonna do a simple, quick, easy uni knot. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna pull that knot down. That's a simple uni. This is not important for anything else other than just to pull this loop through. So I lightly cinched it down on the, the front end loop of that dropper loop. So if you're following me now, I actually leave this tag end. I don't trim it, all right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this red gill down. I'm gonna insert this tag end into the nose, like so. And once it's in there, it's gonna allow me to pull this knot inside the nose of the red gill. And it's gonna bring my dropper loop inside and through the red gill, right? And you see now that's why I needed that length. If, we, if I tied that dropper loop too short, that loop's not gonna come out. I need that length in order to loop onto a hook. When we get to the hook part of this discussion here, Time out a second, just gotta, you can either clip this or untie it. I'm just getting a little bit of line out of the way here so I can cut it safely without compromising my loop. It's another reason why I like to use the lighter line but also a colored line like that. So I took off that extra leader that I used really just as a chase to pull it through, called a snake, through the inside part of the bait. I used a Mustad 3407 DT hook, there's a Duraton hook. You could also use a 34007, which is a stainless steel hook. I feel that the DT Duratin is a little stronger. Yeah, it rusts over time, but you know these leaders are gonna get chafed up. You're catching fish, and it's a great strong hook. It's a little bit of a longer shank, uh, but it's a classic O'Shaughnessy style hook. You could pick and choose whatever hook you want, but you want to try to use a hook with a smaller eye because it's gonna lay better inside the bait. So at this point in time, I'm gonna loop this on here, going through the back eye of the of the hook and I'm gonna go around the hook. So I basically just loop that hook onto the dropper loop like so. Very simple. You can keep it on the shank or you can pull it up around the hook so it's looped up in the front, it doesn't really matter. And what I do is I just slide this back and I pull this back and I insert that hook into the, that little tail cavity there for the hook, slide this up, kind of massage it on its way and get it to sit in its final resting place in its home there like so. And that right there is how you rig a, a red gill teaser on a dropper loop rig for casting off the surf. You can fish it on the beach or in the boat when there's sand eels around. I personally don't think there's a better teaser for more durability, action. Um, striped bass love them. You catch just about anything on these from cod, sea bass, striped bass, you name it. If it eats a sand eel, it's gonna eat a red gill. You can fish it with even a heavier hook, probably catch tuna on these things. I've never attempted it but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Uh, and I do know some anglers that fish these in, in say, a uh, high-low fashion. So you actually have two or three, almost like a sabiki rig, if you wanted to get into the smaller size, right? So right now, I was just rigging up these eight-inch baits, but they also make, this one here is a four and a half called the Rascal, and the bigger one's the Raver. They also used to make a Thresher, which is an eight and a quarter inch, more like an eel size. But for me, it's always been this, this size here I like best. I really don't play much with these really small ones. But if you're looking for a small profile teaser, these are a great option as well. And like I mentioned, you don't have to rig it up this way. This is the person the way I rig it. And going back to what I said a second ago, you put a loop down here for a sinker. If you're looking for the ultimate casting distance, you could put a small bank sinker down here. You could put a clip and clip on a diamond jig. You could even fish a popper, whether it's a pencil popper, a Polaris style popper, maybe even a swimming plug. So this sand eel is kind of dancing around in front of that lure down here. This, the, definitely for sure the diamond jig is gonna give you a good distance or a standard bank sinker will give you the distance back here, the weight and, and, and um, you know, casting kind of uh, aerodynamics for longest cast to, to really get this out there far as you can. But you can also fish these vertically. You, know, you could put a bucktail down here, a rubber shad, um, a diamond jig and fish these vertical you know, style in a boat, bouncing on bottom or casting and retrieving them. So if that brings some value to you, hopefully that makes rigging up and fishing a red gill uh, less challenging 
and hopefully you catch a bunch of fish when the sandals are around and fish are looking for small slender baits with red gills. You can pick them up today at Fisherman's Headquarters, fishermanshedquarters.com. Thanks for checking it out.